It's the UTRGV Women's Basketball Show. My name is Jonah Goldberg. This is the one and only Larry Tidwell. <laughs> yes, it is today. Today <laughs> only. But uh, getting ready, Jonah, for a long road trip that has us in Corpus Christi. It has us in San Antonio, has us in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and Manhattan, Kansas. How does the travel for something like that work? Are you busing the whole way? Is there a combination of buses and planes? combination we'll leave tonight uh, we go to classes all day on Monday I want to make sure our kids don't miss as much school as possible we'll go up to Corpus get in about midnight get some sleep have a shoot around play on the bus that night headed to San Antonio get some sleep get up practice study halls <coughs> we, um, excuse me we always have study halls on the on the road we play Thursday night in San Antonio against Incarnate Word fly out at 5:30 the next morning from San Antonio and fly to Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, we bus and we play them Saturday at noon, so we don't have much of a turnaround, 36 hours. And then you're looking at driving Saturday. We're going to go up to uh, going to go up to Manhattan, Kansas. We're going to practice. We're going to study. We're going <laughs> to eat. Of course, they love to eat. We eat a lot on the road. <laughs> but um, I know this is a, a very special deal for me. On Sunday night, I'm going to have dinner with. Uh, Coach Bill Snyder, the head football coach at Kansas State, was my college coach in really? football at Austin College. Yes, he was. And so, going to go up and have dinner with him and, and get to visit with him a little bit. And then we play Monday night. And from Manhattan, we'll drive to Kansas City on Monday, or excuse me, on Tuesday. And then we'll fly home and be back in the Valley uh, Tuesday afternoon, getting ready for finals. We had a 10-day break after that. so. We're four and three with four big games ahead and trying to keep our head above water. But I do feel like the, the road games do two things. They, they bond us and they make us tougher as we get ready to contend for a WAC championship. Plus two, a lot of the games that we go on, we play on the road, um, they're guaranteed games. We bring back money. We put back in our, our budget to help pay, uh, <coughs> pay for summer school. And that's very important for us to have summer school because when we have summer school, and our administration helps us with that a lot. When you have summer school, your kids' GPAs are better. They graduate in the field they really want to graduate. And most of the time, they graduate on time. And that's very important. And the great thing about you know, those games uh, you mentioned, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, you know, TCU. You almost beat TCU at their place the other day. Well, I tell you what, we played well. We didn't start well. We, we got behind, and then we came back, cut it. You know, we talked in huddle, <coughs> let's cut it to eight before half. Well, we got it to five. And then we got in the third period, then we took the lead. And we kept the lead, and we kept the lead until about a minute, minute 36 left. Uh, they got a girl named Zana Medley, who preseason All-American, you know, yeah. choice. And so she she hit some really nice shots on us. And as we did, went down the road, we did, we've got things that we've got to do. And then there's things that we can't control. And on the things <laughs> that we can't control, we just got to <coughs> adjust to it as much as we can. But we, we didn't, I thought we played pretty good defense down the stretch, and then we got some fouls called on us that could have gone either way, and they didn't go our way. So we'll just live with it and move on. And uh, Reagan, uh, Scott Peebley up there does an excellent job. This is her second year motivator, energizer, but I mean, she does an extremely good job with TCU. I know that program very well after being there for a long time. <laughs> and just really playing a first-class program like TCU does you a lot of good, and it, it helps you when you really play them good. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and, and that's, what, that's what we're hoping. We're just hoping it's light at the end of the tunnel, not a train. Mm -hmm. We hope it's uh, <laughs> wide open spaces that we're getting better. Well, one of the big things that jumped out at me was Anushka Maldonado, 12 points, 12 rebounds, 3 blocks. You know, she played very physical. Uh, it's like having a coach on the floor. It really is. I mean, she communicates. She talks. She doesn't mind coming off the bench. Uh, that way she can give uh, Hilder some rest. She can give uh, Mary Savoy some rest. I mean, is she? but she was so good the other day, you couldn't take her out. And she played about 30 minutes. and. And just had a, a, a breakout night for us. But the thing that I really uh, liked about her was her leadership on the floor and talking and getting people to work hard. 
Nice luxury when you have someone like that coming off the bench, huh? It, it is. And then, you know, you've got Nichelle Hyman coming off the bench. You've uh -huh. got... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. You've got uh, Adele Turk is really coming into her game. She had played some very good minutes for us coming off the bench. I, I'm really trying to find for Laura Van Tilburg. I think she's really coming on and going to find time for her. And and we're just trying to make sure that we're getting all of the right pieces to the puzzle and and making sure that that we're where we need to be as we go into uh, after this week our Christmas. Uh, uh, not our Christmas, <coughs> but our finals. Yeah. To get ready for that, we got a 10-day break. Then we got two more games before the Christmas break. So critical times are coming up right now as we get locked in and settle in on the lineup that we want to take into uh, WAC play starting January the 7th at our place against Grand Canyon. Well, you've used the same starting lineup every game so far. Do you like what you see? I, I do like what I see. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with the way that, that uh, Bernicia Peters is playing. A freshman, four foot eleven on a good day, but she'll challenge anybody on the floor. It doesn't matter, and she'll attack the basket and she'll get her shot off. And really appreciate the way that she's brought uh, just a winning attitude to the floor. And her and Edel, uh, her and Adele Turk are always the first ones out. You know, we open up the gym at twelve thirty. Yeah. They're always the first ones out to come shoot, and you've got to appreciate that when kids come out and want to work hard. You know, one of the other uh, things we've seen in the lineup that's changed this year, you, you talk about it a lot, Shantae Goff uh, running the offense a lot this year, where she had been, uh, you know, three most of the time mm -hmm. in the past. Uh, what have you thought of that? Well, she was, uh, when she ran to three, she was probably the, the uh, thinnest and uh, smallest three in the mm -hmm. country. Usually you have six-footers, 5'11s there. So we did put her back in a natural spot for her. The one, two is just natural for her. But we needed it to one to create stuff for us, and she has done an excellent job. She's taking care of the ball, and she's shooting the ball pretty well. She's still not hit the the stretch of where she's going to make around 45, 50 percent of her shots, and she will do that. But her defense is good. It's got to get better. Um, we we have a chance to be pretty good defensively if they buy into it, and I'm hoping they do because her and Rock should really, and Mary Savoy could really do some damage with steals and stuff as quick as they are, as well as, as Bernie. But, um, yeah, she's coming along and, and progressing extremely well. And as we talked on this show going into the Corpus game, she's 10 points shy of 1,000 points. Which is super exciting, you know, when somebody can get that close. She's looking to become, I think it's the seventh player in program history to break the 1,000 points plateau. She's already in the top five or top ten of a lot of different program right. categories. What's it like to be able to coach someone who you know is going to go down as one of the greatest players in program history? Well, it, it's it's good. She's uh, She loves the game of basketball, and I think she has a really good chance to play at the next level, and she will play at the next level at a high level if, if practice becomes intense. If she becomes more intense at practice, I think that she has a chance to be really, really good. Now, she practices hard, don't get me wrong, but if she would take it to another level in practice, uh, she would set all the records here and, and, and play at the levels that she wants to play, and that's in the, uh, I think she's got the talent to play in the WNBA. Wow. Yeah. And you would know, you've coached several WNBA players. Several of them, yes, and I've had um, four have gone to the WNBA, and I've had 31 others go overseas and play, and she could play at a high level in, in the European League, France, you know, Moscow, I mean, Russia, and things along that line. She has that potential. And we just got to fine tune her shot a little bit. But she, if she brings intensity to practice like I need her to do, and, it, and when she does that, then it changes our practice and it makes us a better team to uh, contend for a WAC championship. And she's one of the three captains this year, you know, along with Mikel Preston and Hilder Bjork, Karch and Zara. What have you thought of what you've seen from them so far? Uh, very good leadership. You know, Rock plays hard. Rock, I moved her from a four to a three, and she's handling the ball. She's got a broken finger, and she's handling the ball and passing the ball as good as she can possibly do. And uh, always, you know, encouraging people, things along that line. And, and we'll play physical, play with a lot of force. And, and Hilder is the... Uh, the quiet one, and she does everything by leading. She doesn't have to say a whole lot. She leads, and she does a very good job of leading for us. And Mary Savoy, uh, you know, as we round out the starting lineup, 
uh, she's been out there at, at uh, the center. And, you know, you think back early on, she had that 20-point, uh, 22-rebound explosion. She had the game-winning shot with, what, about a second left? at uh, Santa, Santa Barbara, Barbara yeah. And she's been in she's uh, very season. talented, and, and again, too, she's locking into what I want to do, and we get back to that practice intensity and, and practice intensity of Goff and, and Savoy want to have intense practices, and we would have great practices. Not again, they do practice hard, but I'm talking about both of them could take it to another level on their practice. So four and three uh, to start the season. Uh, what are your thoughts on how that's gone so far? Well, the four and three, you know, East Carolina, I think I looked at them, they're six and one, and they're a, they're a top 40 team. You look at, uh, you look at, uh, oh, I'm trying to think here, Eastern, Eastern Michigan. Oh, Eastern Michigan, very good team, and I don't think they've been beat yet. They're probably around five and zero, oh, and then TCU is six and one. So you're looking at teams that are probably sixteen and two, and and the thing is, with the exception of the Eastern Michigan game, we just we weren't very sharp. Uh, Shantae was sick, and so was Mary. We didn't we didn't play <coughs> played our capabilities in. But uh, those three, I think our RPI is hovering around one twenty one. 140 somewhere in there I mean it, and it's gonna we get a few more wins it's gonna continue to go you know get lower and that's what we're after too but we're trying to get this team ready get them ready for the conference get them ready for the Western Athletic Conference and again that starts January 7th and as we have Grand Canyon here first on the Thursday night and then we have Utah Valley here on a Saturday so two big ones to get going on. Now first, you go to Texas A&M Corpus Christi tomorrow, and uh, you know you were in a tournament with them. Uh, I know you didn't actually face them, but did you get a chance to watch them in person and learn some stuff? About I them? did. Uh, you know, again, Royce Chadwick, I feel like, is one of the best coaches around any level, anywhere, and uh, he does a really good job. Those kids are going to play really hard on on uh, on defense. They're going to man you, and they're going to press you, and then uh, a lot of screens offensively. He does a lot of good, good a lot of good things. Uh, his his one twos and threes handle the ball extremely well. They can get up and down the floor. The fours and fives are agile, mobile, and they will get in there and fight you and and for rebounds. So yeah, he's going to have a very tough team. He's got about four or five coming off the bench that are good too. So yeah, we've got our hands full. And then we go up to Incarnate Word, and Incarnate Word is playing very good ball. They're making some things happen for their program and and. Uh, very nice program, and it's going to be hard to win on the road. When you go in on the road, you better be eight to ten points better mm. because things do not fall for you on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Is so, it nice to be able to play in Carnivore twice in a span of two weeks? It kind of gives you that uh, simulation of you know making adjustments when conference play. Well, happens. you know the thing I wish you know you know we go all over the country to play, but I wish uh, A&M Corpus, I wish Houston Baptist, I wish Incarnate Word, I wish. We could play each other twice, and that would take care of a lot of your scheduling problems. And we're taking care of our scheduling problems a lot next year. We're going to have a Thanksgiving Classic and a Christmas Classic, mm -hmm. and that's because our administration has bought into what we're doing, and we're going to be able to have some guarantee money. So that way we don't have to go on the road all the time like we do this year. We're playing 18 road games. That's unheard of. we got 11 at home. And so we're getting that accomplished. We're cleaning up the schedule that I inherited three years ago. And so we're making that right, and we want to do those things. But, yeah, we're, we're excited about this season. We're excited about what we can do. Um, we just got to get a lot of people in the stands. And that's where you turn programs around is when the people buy into it and come out and support you because you get the top recruits when you have people in the stands to watch you play. Well, UTRGV on the road for four more starting tomorrow at Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, off to Incarnate Word, Oklahoma State, and Kansas State. After that, we'll catch up with Coach Tidwell when that stretch is complete. And then after that, they'll come back home on December 17th at the Thursday, 7 p.m. against Incarnate Word. He's Larry Tidwell. He's head coach of UTRGV women's basketball This team. is Dr. J, the original Dr. J, not, not Julius Irvin. This is Dr. Jonah, Dr. Jonah the... The man, the myth, the legend of media relations. <laughs> hey, go Buckettos. <laughs>